home these days. All right, Evan, a couple of changes uh, out this hour. One is we're hearing from the American president through tweet that the border will be shut down to everything except the essential traffic, so trade and commerce, as they're talking about healthcare workers. We knew this was coming and best to work on it with the Americans as opposed to Canada just imposing this. That's right, Morella. I talked to the Prime Minister's office, a source inside there last night. They confirmed a story that originated in the United States that they had been working closely with the Americans to do something that is unprecedented. And again, I don't know how we can stress this more, Morella. Everything that's happening is unprecedented. We remember back in 9 11, the biggest concern was do not close the border. Now we're going to close the border, but it's very important for people to realize that we are closing the border except to goods and services, but that will still have consequences. You've already heard from farmers and different representatives who say, wait a second, we need migrant workers to help plant and harvest. How will they cross the border? Could that affect food supply? So people who argue that this is just, you know, let's shut the door and lock it, it's very complicated, and there'll be rolling consequences to that, which is why in a couple of minutes, we'll hear the prime minister and then the finance minister roll out what will be uh, a stimulus package over $25 billion. That's 1% of our gross domestic product. That's essentially what uh, private sector economists are saying will be the cost of COVID-19 right now. And this is uh, put us on par, just if people are trying to get a sense of this. This is back in 2008, 2009, the great economic recession. That's what the kind of levels of support plus that we're talking about. So look for support for families, look for uh, immediate support through things like EI and the Child Benefit Program and others. And then sectors will be looking for rolled out support. The banks have weighed in already giving people uh, you know, extensions on a case-by-case -case basis for six-month mortgages. So, Morella, uh, this is a, a, a response from the private sector, government sectors, individuals, uh, which is, I don't think we, anybody's seen anything like this. And, and again, I don't want to over-dramatize it, but this kind of level of collective action, 9-11, and then you maybe go back to a wartime footing, and I use that, that term that Macron, the president of France, has used. All right, Evan, I want to take you back to the border uh, for a moment and talk about that a little bit more. Because as you mentioned, commerce and trade has to, has to happen. It will go through. This is the Ambassador Bridge, by the way, between Windsor and Detroit. How are they going to carve out these exceptions? I imagine the chaos at the border if you're a healthcare worker who they say will be able to go back and forth if they need to, or a truck driver, but you have something that it's questionable, is that an essential thing that's needed in this country or that? It sounds like there's just going to be these long waits and long lineups, and, and this could really backlog the border. Yeah, it, it could. You're, what you're hoping, and, and I'm speaking to sources, what they're hoping is that by saying there's no non-essential travel, people that are just moving over for cross-border shopping or travel, that will cease. But this is the busiest trade border in the world. And um, you're 100% right. How do they calibrate that with trucks and commercial licenses? How do they make sure that the supply chain... I mean, we all want our pharmacies and our groceries and the goods and services that we rely on as we're all in isolation to keep flowing... And we don't want that panic hoarding again. So it'll be very interesting to watch a couple of things. One, and, and there's now, this is a huge news day. Watch for the prime minister to give us some detail of how this border is going to work. Now, remember, that announcement, the announcement at uh, 1030 today, this is the economic announcement, but he'll get questions about it. Uh, apparently, they're working with the U.S. administration to, to talk about what you're saying. Now, remember, we've got, literally hundreds of thousands of Canadians, snowbirds, people who work uh, across the border all the time. How is this going to manage? So this is an unprecedented moment. It's extremely complicated and extremely disruptive. So let's just pace ourselves as we try to figure out that. Then the $25 billion plus package that we're expecting and where does that go? How does that money flow? And then, of course, the ongoing health concerns. So if you're out there thinking, my goodness, I can't keep up, join the club. It's, well, it's a yeah, lot of news. There's a lot coming at us from every a different direction, and not just in Canada, right, but around the world. Okay, let me talk about the $25 billion, because as you mentioned, that is a great number. That will be a great announcement. That will provide some solace just hearing that number for people. But 
the devil's in the details, right? How is that money going to flow? Because are people going to have to now apply for EI again? How long is that process going to take? Are there workers to process that in Ottawa or across the country? How do people get access to cash that they will need very quickly? I mean, child benefit, that's fine, but how often does it come out? Yeah, so again, the details are going to be critical. Uh, first of all, on the number, is it enough? There's going to be a lot of COVID morning quarterbacking on this. Again, this is 1% of GDP. This puts us on par with where we kind of were 2008, 2009. This is big stuff. But people are going to look at the United States, $800 billion mm. to a trillion dollars. That's a different caliber. So we'll have to see. Maybe there'll be a, a part two. And, and watch for the prime minister today say this is only the first tranche. We will reevaluate and we may have a second go. Remember, this is a moment where interest rates are at historic lows. So it's a time that governments do borrow. But, you know, you go deeper into it. There's deficit concerns eventually. But there's also where it's spent. Putting money in the pockets of people, it's like sending them checks, can really help in the short term. But it's not what economists call a job multiplier, which means when you invest in things like infrastructure, which is what happened in 2008, 2009, that's a stimulus to the economy over the long term. So there'll be questions about how people access the money. And what we're hearing is uh, there'll be some uh, legislative changes needed, which is why Parliament will come back to make some of these, uh, this money available through programs like EI and Child Benefit. But the application process, the speed process, uh, that's going to be tricky. Uh, and then, of course, businesses will be looking to the government for support. How do they get support for their sector? What I'm told from the prime minister's office is there'll be an announcement today on uh, support for businesses hit hard, but there will be a kind of rollout over time on that. But again, the sources are calling this significant and comprehensive, but the devil, as you say, is in the details. How long will this last? How do you get the money? Who is eligible? How do you figure that out? Who will administer this if the government is working at home like we all are? Uh, Morella, you're asking great questions, and we're looking for the uh, finance minister and the prime minister to answer some of those very shortly. You are talking about short-term pain for long-term gain, and that's the way we know they like to look at it. They want to, as you say, make sure that if they're handing out money and that's a quick fix, they also have something in a longer term to, to buffer up the economy. Uh, very quickly, Evan, because I'm running out of time, emergency measures, do you think we're there yet? No, I don't. I asked last night again, um, I know the uh, province of Ontario, Alberta, and uh, PEI have declared states of emergency. The Emergency Measures Act does not give the federal government, they tell me at this moment, the powers that are required right now, but they have, are holding that in reserve. I think today we'll be focused strictly on the financial package, the 25-plus billion, it could be even more, when and how, and then there'll be a lot of questions about that U.S.-Canadian border, which has now emerged as the other story, and then, I, again, I just want to reiterate to people, talk to your banks if you're concerned about your mortgage or your credit services. The big banks on a case-by-case -case basis are also helping out, giving people up to six-month deferral. So there's a lot of support out there. The question is, and I think, you know, for people who have trouble signing up for online apps and services, that's going to be the question. How do you get it in a time of high anxiety? And we're hoping there's some clarification very soon, Morella. Got it. Evan, appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us today. We'll check in with you again.